Hi, I'm Karen Cashin, CEO of Tech Alpharetta, and this is Tech Alpharetta's podcast series, Driving Innovation, where we explore the people and companies that are driving innovation. And this morning, we have with us here Alan Nelson with Taylor English Law Firm. Alan, how are you? Thanks for I'm, joining us. I'm great, Karen. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, absolutely. Glad you could be here. So. I have to start off with just one quick comment, which is, I know you're a Blue Devil fan. I am, yes. <laughs> I am indeed, and I'm looking forward to uh, hopefully a great basketball season this season. Yeah, yeah, it's, and I understand you're going to be uh, at, at the upcoming basketball game. I'm going to be in a number of them this year, which is good fun. It's uh, Coach K's last run, and uh, we're very excited about it. Nice, nice. Well, I'll be, I'll be living vicariously. <laughs> Through you. So tell us what you do at Taylor English. Sure. So I'm a partner in the Taylor English Duma Law Firm. Uh, I'm the uh, practice group leader of our fractional general counsel practice. Um, and what that means is I'm the co-founder of TE General Counsel, which is which we go to how we go to market with that fractional general counsel practice. And how long have you been practicing law? <laughs> Far longer than I care to remember. Uh, <laughs> 32 years now. Wow. 32 years. All in the Atlanta area. Uh, tell us a little bit as well about what you did before joining Taylor English. Sure. So I started out in, in, in private law firms uh, in, in the area. One was an AmLaw 100 firm. One was a smaller firm. Um, really doing a lot of litigation um, for typically very large companies. Uh, over time, uh, I moved in-house with Bell South Corporation, the old phone company, uh, right. which eventually merged with AT&T. Did a wide variety of things there, everything from... Um, you know, IP work to licensing work to trademark work to litigation to employment, just a very wide range of things. What that allowed me to do was develop a, a, an expertise and, and a, a skill set around general practice of law in a corporate setting. Sure. Um, that allowed me to become the general counsel of a company called Crawford and Company, which is a New York Stock Exchange traded company based in Atlanta but global. Right. The company's in 70 countries around the world. Uh, and I was the global general counsel there, uh, responsible for all legal issues facing the company. Uh, I then moved to Taylor English, um, uh, practiced with Taylor English for a bit, doing uh, really kind of corporate board work and corporate governance type work. Uh, I became a private company general counsel at a very early stage energy company okay. uh, for a period of time. And then I came back to Taylor English with a very particular purpose, uh, and that was to create this fractional general counsel business. And that's what I really want to focus on here today, because very often we, we tend to look at the legal industry as a bit of a dinosaur when it comes to innovation. One, mm -hmm. of, the, one of the last industries um, to really consider innovating and, and changing longstanding methods, because there's a lot about the practice of law that really hasn't changed over the years. And so... What fascinates me is whenever I hear about a method or an idea or a technology that is changing the way things have always be do been done in the legal industry. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'd love to hear more about uh, the TE General Counsel practice and what you've created. Sure. Um, I, and I agree with you, by the way, as an aside, 100 percent. I mean, the legal business... Um, in a lot of ways, is much the same as it was when I came into it many years ago right. now. And um, there, there are some positive things about that because, you know, frankly, most firms focus on excellence and client service. That's great. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, not using technology to its greatest effect, that's not terrific. Uh, not, frankly, being as client-centric as they should be is not that terrific. Uh, so we've, we've very much focused on uh, creating a model where we have um, former in-house lawyers who have, you know, great legal skills. That's always table stakes. Of course. Um, but they also have business savvy. Uh, and it's the folks who range from, you know, people who've been in very mature companies uh, to folks have, who have really started up companies, uh, be it as a lawyer, frankly, or you know, being uh, working with them as a lawyer, uh, or frankly as founders themselves or investors in companies that are in growth stage spaces. And so what we're bringing to the market is, a, is an offering that provides legal services to companies that clearly have a need, but what they do not want to do uh, is bring on someone in-house, take on the cost of that, Right. Um, or they don't want to go to the outside firm um, that's, you know, kind of the historical name brand firm in the in the startup space. There are a lot of those firms out there, um, and, they, and they're very fine firms, 
but they're they're very much kind of volume focused, uh, and they're very 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 expensive for right. the value they're providing. Uh, and indeed, I would I would argue that in a lot of cases they're not providing a lot of value. We're very very value focused, and, and you might think, well, that's not a particularly innovative thought. In the legal business, it is. Uh, yes, it's a very innovative definitely. thought. Yes, and so so we're very very focused on that. Uh, we're very focused on you know allowing the clients uh, not allowing but encouraging the clients to tell us exactly what it is they want, how they want it, how they want the services delivered. Um, one of the things I think you know as we've all learned over the past couple of years is that services can be delivered in a wide variety of ways, and so we're, yes. we're becoming more and more creative around that. Um, I've got folks all over the country who are in this space uh, providing services to clients. You know, we may have a lawyer in, in Chicago providing service to a client in Florida. Um, uh, we may have a client, you know, in Atlanta getting service from a, a lawyer in California. Again, none of that sounds particularly innovative to the outside world, but in the legal business, it's, it's you know, it's, it's a little bit unusual in the sense that um, all of these people are very, very expensive, ex experienced, not expensive, very experienced right. former in-house lawyers. Yeah, yeah, which is a great value for those <clears throat> business clients. So how how does that really differ from um, a client hiring a law firm to assist it with certain um, legal questions or legal issues? Sure. What's the and, distinction? Yeah, and, and just to be very clear from the outset, you know, again, I'm doing this within the platform of a Law firm. Uh, right. It's not a particularly right. traditional law firm. It's a very entrepreneurial law firm, and and I would posit very very different from certainly the law firms in, in which I've worked before, uh, and indeed which are you know most of the firms out in the marketplace. Uh, having said that, it is a law firm, and and so you know first thing I'll say is that um, you know we've got very very fine lawyers who can come in and handle those matters and deal with those things, and indeed I work with those folks all the time. The difference in what we're providing, though, is that, for example, if you're an early stage company and, you know, you're going through your first round of funding um, and you're ultimately looking for an exit in three years, pick a time frame. Right. Um, we've got people who've done that, not, not just provided, you know, the blocking and tackling legal service around it, but actually been inside those companies. And they understand the stresses and strains that go along with that sort of part of the life cycle. Uh, they also understand the stresses and strains of later stages of the life cycle as well. Uh, but these are folks that have, you know, kind of, you know, gotten out of bed every morning going to that company, you know, in their, in their careers. And so we, we believe that we provide, um, you know, a, a different sort of insight uh, than someone who, you know, uh, certainly knows the law, but they've not lived the experience. Uh, and that's really what we believe we bring to the table for our clients. And how's it going so far? Have you have you seen a positive response by uh, clients existing and new? Absolutely, it, it's been it's been really fun for me from the standpoint that I I spend a lot of my time having the initial conversations and follow up conversations with our uh, cl potential clients and clients. Um, what's been really interesting to me is that um, people get it. You can sit down and have a conversation with someone, and, right. and they will say, "Yep, that makes sense." And they either need the service or they don't. Yeah, That's fine either way from our perspective because we certainly never want to have somebody retaining us when they don't really need us. You know, that, that doesn't right. make any sense for anybody. Um, but it's just been really interesting to see that the market has responded extremely, extremely well. And, and so the uh, attorneys in your firm that are part of the TE general counsel practice have mainly, um, most of them have had experience in an in-house capacity. All, all, all of, of them, them have in the group. In fact, okay. all of them... Almost all of them, I think maybe one is one exception at this moment, but all of them have actually been GCs. They've all been general counsel in various companies. Okay. And, and so they're, they're, they're used to operating in a world in which, depending on the size of the company, but, you know, they've operated in the C-suite. You know, they've, they've operated right. with the founder or the CEO. Uh, they've operated with the, the advisory board or the board of directors. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what they've done. And they, of course, are practicing lawyers and, and are very good at what they do. Right. But they also understand that when they're handling this IP matter, there could be a marketing effect. There could be an employment effect. There yes. could be... There's a, always a, you know, business implications. There's always business implications. And so what, what I like to think is we're, you know, we're, we're really you know, kind of looking around and identifying issues. And if we are competent to handle them, we handle them. Mm -hmm. if, if we realize you know, we're not, we get one of our colleagues involved, uh, you know, either from our firm or somewhere else if, if we don't have the expertise and get the right person in, and, 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 I, and we have the, the knowledge and the experience 
to know how to do that uh, rather than just throwing somebody at it or trying to do something that we're not equipped to do. Right. And would you say that it's the fact that um, the attorneys that are participating in this have been GCs? Is, is that what the outside businesses, the clients are finding most compelling about the offering? I, th there's no question about yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, it seems like a no-brainer, right? Why wouldn't right. you want want to right, have that, exactly. kind of, that level and, of service and yeah, experience? And, exactly, and, and it, you know, I always say, you know, at worst, you know, it's an extra brain thinking about problems. You right. know, at absolute worst, and yeah. um, you know, we, you know, going to that point, we, people always ask me, how do you how do you price it? You know, kind of what's the model mm -hmm. from a financial perspective? And the model is whatever the client wants and whatever we whatever we agree on. Oh, you answered one of my questions. Um, yes, well, <laughs> try to predict the <laughs> future. You. Um, you know, I, I happen to like, just for my, myself, I like the subscription model. Right. Uh, because I don't like to think about, truthfully, I don't like to think about that, you know, am I, is, was that 0.6 of an hour or 1.1 of an hour? I, I, I don't like that thought process. Um, I understand why it happens out in the world, right. but it's not what I like to do. Uh, no, well, no one likes to do it, but I certainly don't like to do it. And so I like the subscription model. But we have some clients that... Would, they say, well, let's you know, let's start out on an hourly, um, and we'll see where that goes, and then we'll kind of see if we land in a place that gets us to a uh, a reasonable model for a subscription rate. And when you are referring to a subscription rate, is that a, um, a flat fee or or project based fee rather than the point six? Correct, exactly yeah. right. The way to think about it, I mean, it really you know it, it you know any sort of like you know, a SaaS, you know, subscription rate. Right. You're, you're paying for this. This is the service you're mm -hmm. getting. This is how much you pay. Yes. And that's it. And, and that, that to me, again, just temperamentally for me is, is my preferred model. But at the end of the day, you know, I've got in, engagements where I'm doing that. I've got engagements where it's hourly. I've got engagements where it's a mix. Right. Uh, it just really depends on what the client wants and what the client's most comfortable with. Right. So it it's great that it's still highly client driven. Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. And that yeah. that's again an, another benefit of, of what we're doing at Taylor English. Again, as I mentioned earlier, we're a very entrepreneurial firm. Um, and what we don't have is, you know, some group of people behind a curtain somewhere saying, you know, you must charge X on this matter. We just don't have that. Uh, right. We we have a lot of self determination on our relationships with our clients, uh, which is really you know, from a provision of service standpoint, really liberating. And, and pretty unique for the profession yes. as a whole. Very much so. Right. Very much right. so. Right. The fact that, you know, Taylor English would be open to and embrace this this new way of offering services out as a way to better serve its clients speaks highly of the overall dis disposition and uh, leanings of the firm, right, to be that progressive and open-minded. That, that's right. And that's, that's, I mean, that's really, in a nutshell, the history of the firm. I mean, the, the firm was, you know, started by folks who, uh, you know, um, really had a bent toward entrepreneurialism, um, and that's just one. Of the, that's to me the golden thread that goes through everything we do. Um, you know, and and it it really manifests itself in, frankly, the kind of clients we love working with, the kind of clients we like to support, the kind of clients that really love coming to us, because they know there's an incredible not only alignment in how we're providing the services, but there's really a mental alignment. There's a philosophical alignment right. around it as well. Right, absolutely. So so where do you go from here with this practice? What what are the goals now that you've built it and it's uh, been well received by by clients of the firm? What next? I, I, what next for me in, in this practice is really growing it. Um, you know, I'm having discussions now with, with some folks that are incredibly talented folks in just different industry verticals. Uh, I've had conversations with three people this week about it. Uh, I mean, as the word gets out in the marketplace, we're having more and more folks come to us and say, "Hey, what you're doing sounds pretty cool. You know, let's let me, let's try to get involved in it." And again, these are all very experienced, very talented lawyers. Many of whom are folks that have practiced with you know household name brand type companies. Sure, sure. And um, they're they're looking for an opportunity to kind of row their own canoe. You mm -hmm. know, they they don't want to go into uh, an environment where they're going to be just given here are your three clients provide them service. Right. And that's what you do. Right. So that's very interesting. So really, not only is it a great service for clients and prospective clients, but it's also a recruiting tool, in a sense, for 100%. the firm. 100 percent. Yeah. You have to be entrepreneurial. At the end of the day, really, um, they're providing legal services. But as you said, business consulting is so inherently intertwined with, with legal advice when you're, when you're in a general counsel type position. 
um, that, right. uh, you know, that's just invaluable for them to be able to look at and see both sides of the coin there, the legal and the business, and provide, um, you know, advice that's coming from their own background and experience. Right. And, and to pick up on a word you used, I mean, you know, the, the, the legal consulting piece of it is, is I look over the horizon further down the road. Uh, that's absolutely where I see us going. I mean, I, I see us evolving. You know, we'll continue to do the fractional general counsel as I've described it. Right. But I think there are incredible opportunities out there to provide, you know, more consulting services in the space. That's different than a law firm. And it would it operate is. differently than a law it firm. Is. But, you know, particularly, let's, let's take, you know, early stage companies. Um, there are a lot of things that, that, that they're going to have to do that they would have had no reason in the world to think about. Right. They're too busy trying to develop their you know, their the product, technology. get to market, yes. the technology, whatever it is, and so there are a lot of things that aren't really, you know, per se, you know, you know, draft this contract or, um, you know, uh, you know, or, or look at this IP agreement. You know, those are important. You got to right. have those things too, but they're ultimately things. You know, like you know, how do we how do we build out this function? How do we you know how do we think about compliance as we begin to get a little closer toward an exit. Right. How do we, you know, make ourselves, you know, most appropriate for funders? You know, yeah. how do we do those sorts of things? And and I just think there's, you know, down the road uh, a lot of opportunity for us to provide more what I'll call legal consulting type services uh, as we go forward. Well, it makes so much sense. Uh, you know, there's uh, fractional CFO services out there, fractional CEO services. Um, that, you know, there's obviously a demand for this and, and you have, um, replied to the market by creating something to fill that demand, like like any entrepreneur would think, right? Exactly. You see a gap, you fill it. So kudos to you. Well, thank you. Thank and, you. and to Taylor English um, for embracing an innovative way of, of delivering um, services and and legal and a, a bit of business on the side there, but legal services to your clients in a way that best serves the clients. Well, and it's it's one of the great things about the you know the Taylor English platform and, and model. The people that are supportive, uh, people are supportive completely of of kind of out-of-the-box thinking in our world, and uh, and I, I couldn't thank them enough for having the opportunity to do this because, you know, there are a lot of places you just couldn't do this. You just would not, it would be no, a non-starter. there's no room for changing the way no laws room for practiced changing from in that. many but, places. Uh, and so that, that's, been a, that's been a great thing. Thanks for joining us today. I know that we're about out of time, but I appreciate you taking the time to share with us what you're working on. Well, thanks, Karen, very much, and I really appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. Thanks.